Hi, it's Kyle Chester Marsden from Fieldpiece Instruments. Today we're going to be looking at a full decommission and recommission of this AC system. That includes recovery, pressure testing, evacuation and recommissioning the system. So let's get into it. So in order to carry out the recovery, we're going to need some tools. Firstly, we'll need the Fieldpiece digital manifolds and the Fieldpiece valve core removal tools. We'll need the Fieldpiece hoses a recovery cylinder, the field piece digital recovery machine, and the field piece wireless scales. So the first thing I need to do is take off the side panel and that will get me access to the service port on the system. Next up, I have the field piece valve core removal tool. This is the VC2GE model, and I need to change it from a quarter inch fitting to a 5 16 inch fitting. This fitting comes included inside the box when you get any of the Fieldpiece VCRTs. Now using a spanner I can take the service cap off the system and now I can connect the VCRT. There's no need to use a spanner here to tighten it. Finger tight is perfectly fine. Now I can depress the capture rod and start spinning it anti-clockwise whilst taking firm grip of the tool. And this is now removing the valve core inside the system. And once it's completely out, I can then withdraw the capture rod and verify I've got the core through the sight glass. I then close the ball valve remove the capture rod and core and use the magnetic cap to secure this out the way so I don't lose it. Now it's time to connect the hoses to the manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and connect three charging hoses to the manifold service block. I can now connect the low side hose indicated by the blue tag to the end of the VCRT. Now it's time to connect the recovery machine and for this I take off the inlet port cap and connect the yellow tagged hose coming from the manifold to the inlet port of the machine. Then I can take the outlet port cap off and connect a separate hose line to the outlet and this is the hose that will connect to the cylinder. Now I can set up the scales and I start by making sure they're situated on a sturdy equal ground and I can remove the handheld remote from the underside of the unit. I can then turn the scale on by long pressing the power button and then turn the handheld remote on until I see a reading on the screen. I can then press the zero button to set the scale platform reading to zero. The handheld remote can now be magnetized onto the condensing unit to make sure I have easy access of the weight measurements. Now I can place the cylinder onto the scale and connect the other end of the hose coming from the recovery machine outlet port to the cylinder. If the cylinder has two ports, you can connect to either the high side liquid or the low side vapor port to recover the refrigerant. Now I can turn the manifold on, make sure the wireless is on so that the scale connects to the manifold. So I'll go ahead and tear the weight by pressing the zero weight button on the manifold. Next, I need to open the low side valve on the manifold and the rest port on the manifold so that the refrigerant can flow to the recovery machine. Then I make sure the recovery machine is in the recover position, check over all ball valves on the hoses to make sure they're open and then press the start button on the machine to begin the recovery. You can press the units button on the display to cycle through the units you'd like to use and for myself, I'm going to select the bar unit. Now it's simply a case of waiting for the recovery to complete. Once the machine has completed the recovery, it will go into a small negative pressure to help draw any remaining refrigerant out of the system. And then the machine will cut off automatically and sound an alarm to signify the completion of recovery. Now I can mute this alarm and set the dial to the self purge position and press the start button to ensure that all of the refrigerant is cleared from the machine into the cylinder. 
Once this is complete, I can check the final recovered refrigerant value, which in this case is 1.05 kilograms. So that's it. That's how to carry out a system recovery using the field piece tools. Next up, it's time to pressure test. So in order to carry out a pressure test, we're gonna need some tools. Firstly, we're gonna need the field piece refrigerant manifold and the two temperature clamps, some field piece hoses, and a nitrogen cylinder with regulator. With the manifold still connected to the system, I can now connect the yellow hose line to the nitrogen regulator. Now, before I can enter the test tightness mode on the manifold, I must first pressurize the system into a positive pressure value. So I'll now set the nitrogen regulator to 25 bar, and I can now see the manifold pressure beginning to rise. Once I've reached the value I'm going to be pressure testing at and allowed the pressure to settle by waiting for about five minutes, I can go ahead and place the suction line temperature clamp on the system so that we can read a temperature whilst pressure testing. This then allows me to perform a temperature compensated pressure test where if the temperature of the system changes, it will show the compensation for that on the screen. Once the temperature clamp is in place, I'm going to press the enter button and that will start the timer as well as activate the temperature compensated pressure testing function. Once the pressure test is complete, you can press the enter button once more to exit this mode. So now we've pressure tested the system and proved the system integrity, it's time to evacuate the system. And let me show you how. So to carry out the evacuation, we're gonna need some tools. To start with, we're gonna need the field piece digital manifold. We're gonna need the field piece valve core removal tool the field piece wireless vacuum gauge. Then we're gonna need some charging hoses as well as some vacuum hoses and finally a field piece vacuum pump. Firstly, I'm going to add the field piece vacuum gauge to the system by utilizing the additional port on the valve core removal tool. Next, I'm going to add a 3/8 inch vacuum rated hose to the manifold and then the other end I will attach directly to the vacuum pump. I then want to make sure that I'm connected to the vacuum gauge through the manifold, so I'll navigate through the menu items to wireless sources and ensure that I'm connected to ID 0125 on the vacuum tab, and then I can press the menu button to exit. Before I turn the vacuum pump on, I can engage the gas ballast valve lever and then switch on the machine. And a quick check in the sight glass confirms that the machine is running and that the gas ballast valve is engaged, thanks to the orange blinking LED. Now taking a look at the manifold screen, you can see we are measuring minus 29.9 inches of mercury. And as soon as the system gets below 10,000 microns or 10 tor, we should see a vacuum value on the screen that is being mirrored by the vacuum gauge connected to the valve core removal tool. The vacuum gauge will still display the value on the screen also, and I can press the button on the top of the tool to show the rate per minute in which the system is being evacuated. Once in a vacuum pressure, I can press the enter button on the manifold to start the timer and also engage the low and high vacuum alarms. I've set the manifold up to alarm at 1000 microns as this is what the manufacturer of this equipment recommends. And so now it is just a case of waiting until we reach that measurement. Now I'm down in a deeper vacuum, the vacuum pump has removed the majority of the moisture vapor in the system. And so I can now disengage the gas ballast valve and continue the evacuation. And once the system is below the target vacuum pressure, the alarm will sound and I can now isolate the vacuum pump from the system and press the enter button to perform a high rise test. The manufacturer has stated that the system should not rise above 2000 microns within 15 minutes of starting the rise test. And if it does, a further alarm would sound and we would then need to continue the evacuation as there may be residual moisture inside the system. So the rice test is complete and I can press enter to stop the timer. So now that we've successfully evacuated the system, it's time to recharge the system and recommission the system. So to carry out the recommission on the system, we need some field piece tools. 
First off, we need the field piece digital manifold and the field piece valve core removal tools, as well as the field piece charge and air kit, which consists of two psychrometers, two pressure probes, and two temperature clamps. Finally, the field piece hoses. Now, the first thing to identify is what refrigerant type I'm going to be putting back into the system. In this case, it is R32 refrigerant, and the weight is 1.1 kilograms, as mentioned here on the data plate on the side of the unit. So leaving the valve core tool connected to the system, I'm going to utilize the field piece job link pressure probe to obtain a pressure value on the system. So I'll connect this first, followed by a charging hose to the end of the VCRT. The other end of this charging hose can be connected to the refrigerant cylinder. The cylinder can then be placed atop of the weighing scales, open up the liquid valve on the cylinder, and press the tear button on the remote to tear the weight to zero. And now I can open up the valve on the VCRT to allow the refrigerant to flow into the system. Once the refrigerant value reaches 1.1 kilograms on the scale, I can turn the cylinder valve into the closed position and then close the valve on the VCRT also. I can now add the field piece wireless temperature clamps to both the high and low pressure side of the system. And then on the indoor unit, I can connect both the return psychrometer and the supply psychrometer to read the air temperature values. Once everything is connected, I can take a look at the job link application and view all the measurements on the system, including the air temperature measurements, as well as pipe temperature measurements and the system pressures all in one place. I can then tap on the three dots in the bottom right of the screen, tap on create PDF and view the measurements I'm recording in a professional PDF report, which I can then use for my commissioning report. Now it's time to replace the valve core that we removed with the VCRT. So I reattach the capture rod with the core and once it's tight, I can then open the valve, depress the capture rod and rotate clockwise to screw the valve core back into position. Once that's done, I can remove the VCRT and replace the service port cap. So that's it. That's the full system recovery, pressure test, evacuation, and finally recommissioning using the field piece tools. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more great videos.